representatives of the Inter-American Division, the Caribbean Union, Sister Fields, the University of the Southern Caribbean, delegates, delegates at large, special guests, brothers and sisters. I welcome you to the second quadrennial session of the SBG Mission of Seventh-day Adventists, gathering at a time when we are well advanced into the second year of the third quadrennium. This reality becomes evident after having session dates postponed on two consecutive occasions due to the COVID-19 pandemic outbreaks and the explosive eruption of the La Sofre volcano. These two fearsome pestilences have affected every dimension of Vincentian lives and living in unprecedented ways that have never been seen before in living memory. Travel, transportation, the economy, business, schooling, communication, church assembly, evangelism, and even how we are conducting this session today have unleashed on us the new normal which will long exist into the future. It is under these stressful conditions, circumstances, and restrictions that we have gathered in this blended manner, physically and virtually, to do the Lord's business, ever conscious of the fact that the unfriendliness of the environment will never alter the all-consuming presence of our Heavenly Father as we review the quadrennium 2016 to 2019 and courageously charter the course into the future. In reviewing or evaluating any organizational time segment, one must be guided by one's past history and heritage and guardedly move from hindsight to foresight in navigating the future. Our history informs us that the Seventh-day Adventist message first came to our shows in 1895, but was not fully established until 1902. St. Vincent and the Grenadines was first grouped with the East Caribbean Conference in 1903, then with the South Caribbean Conference in 1906, where it remained for 70 years. In 1976, structural reorganization was made which aligned St. Vincent and the Grenadines back with the East Caribbean Conference, where it remained for 31 years. On September 1, 2007, SBG became a region, the first in the Caribbean under the administrative oversight of the Caribbean Union, where it remained until mission status was attained on November 12, 2012. The operational policy of the mission make provision for session to be convened every four years on November 23 to 25, 2015. The first quadrennial session was convened under the rubric, transformed by grace, united in mission, Jesus is coming. A new executive committee was voted to provide leadership, governance, and management of the mission for the ensuing quadrennium. After the installation service on November 26, the committee got down to work and served with pride and passion, conviction, and consecration throughout its tenure. Some 36 executive committee meetings were convened in which critical and important decisions were taken using best leadership practices and guidance from policy documents, which included the Holy Bible, Spirit of Prophecy Writings, General Conference Working Policy, Caribbean Union Workers' Handbook, the Constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and the laws of the state. I express my profound thanks and appreciation to the Executive Committee for your guidance and contributions to the decision-making process, of which some were extremely difficult. 
to satisfy the legal requirements of the operational policy. Yearly constituency meetings were held to report and update, discuss and clarify, interact with constituents, and provide answers to any questions. Five such constituency meetings were held during the quadrennium, of which one dealt strictly with educational matters. At each of these annual constituency meetings, the President delivered what has been dubbed the State of the Mission Address, in which wide-ranging matters were reported on relative to governance, management, achievements, and accomplishments. These meetings were always well attended and conducted in an atmosphere of mutual respect and organizational loyalty, to which I express commendation and appreciation to all delegates and representatives. It is significant to note that our full-time directors increased from four under the previous quadrennium to five under this quadrennium, with the full-time appointment of a stewardship director to give strategic focus and provide continuing education in principles of stewardship. Spiritual leadership does not negate science, neither does it defy reason. In order to make our pastors more accessible to members, increase efficiency, and improve effectiveness, three new districts were created, and eight realigned to move the number of pastoral districts from 10 under the previous quadrennium to 13 under this quadrennium. All pastors were transferred except one, and all districts have been serviced with full-time pastors. Three pastors, Carlson Samuel, Shane Franklin, and Kerry Kerr, were asked to carry the dual function of director pastor, to which they were appointed districts comprising of three churches and placed within close proximity to the mission office. While we have done the best we could in the placement of our pastors, I am fully aware that there are some pastors who would have preferred to be placed elsewhere. Some churches would have preferred to be grouped otherwise, and some officers and members would have preferred to have different pastors. If everyone is to get his preference, then there would be some districts and parishioners without pastors. Like every one of us, it is essential to note that each pastor has his strengths and weaknesses, areas of giftedness and deficiencies. By and large, each pastor functions reasonably well within his scope of limitation and giftedness, to which we say a hearty thank you. Realizing that time has no holiday, dreams have no expiry date, and life has no pause button, the Executive Committee spared no time in redefining who we are as a mission and why we are here at this juncture in history. What product we are selling, who are our customers, and what distinguishes us from other organizations. In responding to these concepts, we would have redefined our corporate culture, which encapsulates our vision, mission, and values, and articulates our marching orders, like the compass which guides ships to their destinations. So our corporate culture would have reframed our thinking, described the roadmap, and prescribe the rules of engagement to keep us on track to accomplish the mission of the Lord. Like the previous quadrennium, 10 growth goals or developmental targets were identified, to which I now reference and provide a summary of our accomplishments, which will be further fleshed out 
by reports from other administrators and directors. Goal number one, growing the church spiritually by glorifying God through vertical and horizontal relationships. Fundamentally, the church is a spiritual entity called out by God to show forth his praises and to tell the world of his matchless grace. The oxygen that sustains spirituality is not man-made, but God breathed. Therefore, spirituality can only grow, develop, and enhance when there is an abiding, ongoing, dynamic, personal, vertical relationship with God, which will trigger a horizontal, peaceable, loving, gracious relationship with our fellow men. Hence, the spirituality of the members fuels all departments, ministries, programs, and activities of the church, both inwardly and outwardly. Leadership considers it their responsibility to help create the environment to foster growth and nurture believers into a saving, intimate relationship with the Lord. How did we do in this area? The Sabbath school functioned as the engine of growth for all age groups, from the cradle to the grave. Sabbath school quarterlies were provided to every member with the encouragement to study the lessons daily and to be present at church weekly for reflection and review of high points of each lesson. Several special weeks of spiritual emphasis were held, which included, but not limited to, senior week of prayer, youth week of prayer, family life enrichment, stewardship education, health promotions, revivals, and evangelistic campaigns. Prayer, prayers, thanksgiving, and fellowship meetings were held where members shared personal testimonies and locked horns together in prayer and intercession for God's supervision and intervention in the lives of believers. Encouragement to read God's word daily were given for development of faith and intimacy, as well as other reading materials such as the Book of the Year, priorities, magazines, devotionals, and other periodicals for personal edification and upliftment. There was Christ-centered teaching and power-packed preaching by our teachers, pastors, and lay ministers to meet personalized needs. Church services were inclusive and efforts made for programs to be more attractive and customer friendly rather than being too predictable. As can be expected, there are different levels of spirituality in the church since new members are added to the church regularly and grace being a daily growth process. Members have been encouraged to seek God personally to consolidate the family altar and to cement long and lasting relationships rather than being satisfied with the rudiments of religion. Goal number two, growing the church qualitatively by capacity building and disciple making for mission acceleration. How did we perform? Directors were heavily engaged in building the human capital through training, seminars, workshops, weekend and overnight camps, retreats, enrichment programs, and spiritual gifts, inventory, among others. Special focus was given to the family, as the family ministries department, inclusive of men's ministries and Adventist singles ministries, were engaged in several yearly 
empowerment initiatives to strengthen relationship and cement stronger family units. Youth ministries held their yearly retreats for youth leaders and camps for senior youth. The first Adventist camp was conducted, which saw just over 250 campers in session. Personal ministries recruited new lay evangelists, trained them, and then deployed for spiritual warfare. The stewardship department used holistic stewardship education, covering the seven aspects of stewardship, to understand our purpose on this earth as stewards and our accountability to God for the resources entrusted to us. Data-driven analysis were done to help determine the number of given units in the church as against the number of given potentials. Our departmental directors will elaborate more on these and other initiatives. Goal number three, growing the church quantitatively by adding 2,000 new converts with yearly average growth of 500 through the Lord Transform Me and Total Member Involvement Initiative. How did we perform? Understanding that evangelism is the lifeblood of the church and that the church is at its best when it is engaged in spiritual warfare. The mission was engaged in several soul-winning encounters and initiatives, all geared towards depopulating hell and populating heaven. The central theme adopted was the general conference, Lord Transform Me, and every member involvement initiative. This welcome initiative had all the ingredients to effect radical transformation in leaders and members as we reconsider our approach to church planting, church growth, consolidation, and nurturing. Through the church clerks, the Secretariat reported 1,327 new accessions for the quadrennium, which puts us at two-thirds of our goal, or 66%. A total of 26 pastoral crusades and 67 lay campaigns were conducted, of which the lay campaigns yielded 593 souls, averaging nine souls per campaign. During the four years combined, there were five centurion pastoral districts. Pastor Brent St. John, our budding youthful evangelist, held two back-to-back -back zonal campaigns in 2018 which saw just over 200 souls baptized. We wish our yields were more compared to the effort and expenditure involved. But nonetheless, we give God praise for the faithfulness of the church to the evangelistic mandate. It is evident that our evangelistic approaches have become too traditional and predictable, for which we must continue to look for best practices and fresh ways as we package the gospel to meet the postmodern minds. Goal number four, growing the church financially by returning $18 million in gross time and combined budget equivalent to no less than 40% of growth type through systematic benevolence, inclusive of the 60-20-20 personal giving guide. How did we perform? Our total tight receipt for the period 2016 to 2019 amounted to 16 million 
$886,854.62. Compared to 13 million, $493,641, which was generated in the previous quadrennium, which amounts to an increase of $3,393,213.62, or 20% when compared to our projected goal of 18 million for the quadrennium, we achieved 94% of the goal and fell short by 1,113,146 dollars or 6%. Combined budget average approximately 34% of type. All funds collected were accounted for and managed in accordance with the organizational requisites of the judge. The Treasurer will provide more on our financial positions. We express our gratitude to our faithful members who supported the work of the Lord sacrificially. Goal number five growing the church structurally by moving from mission status to conference status, thereby engendering more self-reliance, greater self-sufficiency, and improved self-determination in mapping our preferred future. What have we done? We looked at the prerequisites for moving from mission to conference and started a conversation vigorously to the extent where we had a straw budget created to see what it will cost us financially to effectively manage our operations at the aspirational level. As far as the human resources are concerned, we are well equipped with stable pastoral and teaching staff and our church membership record have been updated to meet the general conference ACMS standard. I am of the view that had we achieved the $18 million projected for time, we would have been in a better position to request an evaluation from the higher organization to determine our readiness to move to the next level. With the acquiring of our state-of-the-art office complex, the retiring of our curve loan, and with anticipated tight increases, I believe we would be in a much better position to make the transition during this current quadrennium. I believe that the voices would be louder the conversations more lucid, and the given potential more targeted as we consider change of status moving forward. Goal number six, growing the church infrastructurally by completing and dedicating four new church buildings, a state-of-the-art modern office complex, upgrading educational facilities, purchasing of available lands, and supporting other construction projects for mission development. How did we perform? Administration has always had an eye open for the acquisition of lands, construction of new buildings, and upgrading facilities in compliance with established building codes and averaging the quality of the building stock in the country. To this end, four parcels of land were acquired, four groundbreaking ceremonies conducted for the commencement of church construction, 
and three church buildings and a new spanking mission office headquarters complex were dedicated to the glory of God and for service to humanity. It goes without saying that the flagship infrastructural project during the quadrennium was the acquiring of the Shepherd's building adjacent to the dental clinic, which was modernized, beautified, retrofitted, and furnished to become the state-of-the-art headquarters office complex, accommodating 14 offices, a boardroom, conference room, reception room, reception hall, two guest rooms, and a rentable space to facilitate any business venture or operation. The building became ours on the 14th of July, 2017, after which a Thanksgiving service to signal commencement of transformational works was held on the 16th. The building was dedicated on April the 21st, 2019, with much fanfare, display, and Thanksgiving. It is significant to note that a loan of $4 million was successfully processed from the Caribbean Union Revolving Fund, to which $3.1 million was paid for the building and remained a use for upgrading, refurbishing, modernizing, and furnishing the new office complex. The loan plus interest which amounts to $4.6 million, was successfully amortized over a four-year period, which ended July 31st, 2021. How did we make this payment possible? The Lord led me to one of the successful business entrepreneurs in Trinidad, who has a deep conviction and abiding commitment for the work of the Lord in the Caribbean Union. I shared with him our vision for owning this building for mission development and sought his blessing and financial assistance to make it a reality. After many thoughtful discussions and prayerful consideration, he agreed to help finance the repayment of the loan over the four-year period to the tune of five million Trinidad dollars. Elder Mahes Raghunath, our primary donor, lived up to his pledge and commitment to which we owe an enormous depth of gratitude and appreciation for his abiding love to the Lord and his timeless generosity to the church in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to our churches and loyal members who supported this venture. We owe similar gratitude and appreciation for their ongoing financial commitment and sacrifice in the repayment of our mortgage. We cannot ever forget Elder Franklin Haynes, civil engineer who managed the project and spearheaded the renovation works for well over a year without requesting a cent for his efforts, such as being his sacrifice for the Lord's work, to which we say again, thank you, Brother Haynes. Today the building stands as a monumental achievement, which represents the face of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and bears evidence that the Lord deserves the best. Goal number seven, growing the church educationally by aspiring for academic excellence within a spiritually charged environment. Education and redemption are like hands and gloves, closely fitted together for the salvation of our boys and girls. It is primarily for that reason why education is in our spiritual DNA and why we operate two high schools and three primary schools. 
All of our schools have lived up to their spiritual requisites, excelled academically, and stands parallel to what is considered to be the more prestigious schools in the country. Each of the three primary schools had 100% passes yearly in the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, CPEA, with the two high schools maintaining a ranking within the top 10 of the 26 secondary schools operating in the state. Beckway SDA Secondary has been progressively aspiring to higher heights of academic achievement, ranking third in achievement in the 2019-2020 school year with 94% passes, coming closely behind Girls High School and the St. Martin's Secondary School. Thanks to all stakeholders of education who so wonderfully supported Adventist education. The education report will provide more details. Goal number eight, growing the church technologically by utilizing the internet, updating websites, web links, social networks, print, communication, and electronic media for communicating the gospel. What have we done? The communication department led out in a variety of training, assisting communication secretaries and their churches to understand what is needed in communicating the gospel in this digital age. We were the first in the Caribbean Union to launch our own mission app, which was rolled out early in 2017. A weekly mission online newsletter was launched with local, regional, and international readership. The website was upgraded with organizational designated emails using the distinct Zoho domain. A national archive in which information, documents, and photos are stored was commissioned in 2018. Five churches are doing regular streaming of church services. The In Touch television program, aired on Mondays at 6 p.m., has been modified with lay minister Pearlene Weeks being the anchored hostess. The New Life Radio broadcast aired on Thursdays at 6.15 is anchored by the pastors. The president communicated regularly with his pastoral letters to the church for information sharing, encouragement, inspiration, and mobilizing members for programs support. The print media carried yearly independence and Christmas messages from the president. Position statements of the church on homosexuality, transgenderism, and gambling were made public in all newspapers, which attracted widespread readership attention with diverse responses. We joined the Coalition of Christian Churches' response to the constitutional challenge of the boundary and gross indecency laws of SBG in a march and rally in Kingston on November the 14th. 2019. We participated in the annual independent service and national prayer service. The president religiously makes his annual visit to the prime minister and other ministers of government, where prayers are offered for these civic leaders and their families. The church commands the respect of the government and the nation by and large. Goal number nine, growing the church by its serviceability, community volunteerism, 
image building, and networking with agencies that share our common values. What have we done? On the 27th of October, 2018, at Victoria Park, on the occasion of the 38th National Independence Parade, the Pathfinders were invited to perform the national display with the formation of the number 38 in the center of the parade square before a physical audience of approximately 10,000 and viewing audiences on television and the World Wide Web. The drill squad elegantly performed with tremendous magnificence, precision timing, and super brilliance, much to the thunderous applause of an appreciative audience and viewers to the live telecast to which the Prime Minister in his independence message paid a glowing tribute to the church and the Pathfinders in particular for their excellent high-class performance. The administration was so impressed that a reception was held in their honor during the convening of the year-end executive committee meetings. The Community Services Department was active during the quadrennium, responding to human needs and other social concerns. Prison ministries were in focus with yearly visits to the three penal institutions in the country. 15 inmates surrendered to the Lord and were baptized while in incarceration. Adventist Development and Relief Agency, Adra, was on spot in the northern section of the island, delivering hot meals and providing psychological support in the aftermath of six disturbing consecutive weather trough systems in 2017, which left a trail of destruction to roadway and personal dwelling houses. Ten years of ministering to the differently abled was celebrated by the called church, which has adopted this ministry with grace, care, and compassion. Over 50,000 US dollars was contributed from our disaster fund to Haiti in the aftermath of Hurricane Matthew, Dominica, and the Northern Caribbean Conference in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria and Irma, and to the Bahamas in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian. We were the recipients of four 40-foot containers of assorted furniture, paints, and other materials from the Paris, the Painter Family Ministries out of California. His family traveled to St. Vincent, during the summer of 2018, where they provided a paint and performed paint jobs on two church buildings, Mountain View Adventist Academy, Marion House, and the Peace Memorial Hall. We hosted the His Love Choir from the University of the Southern Caribbean, which inspired the church, motivated students, and electrified the nation with their sweet, angelic, contemporary musical recitals and promotion of the university. The Prime Minister held a reception at his residence on their behalf, where the choir serenaded the Prime Minister and other invited dignitaries. The Vincentian Adventist American Association sponsored yet another mission project in which children camps were held and backpacks presented to each child. Distributions of health items and supplies were made to healthcare institutions. We were also blessed by the presence and ministry of Dr. Fitzroy Maitland, who once worked in St. Vincent and who presented revival messages during the nights. 
We hosted the administration of the Caribbean Union in 2018 as they conducted an administrative audit of the mission. A letter of satisfaction and commendation was subsequently received expressing appreciation from the administration for the manner in which the mission is managed. Goal number 10, growing the church by its heritage and updated history, celebration of significant anniversaries, and appreciation of contributors to mission development. Leadership is driven by our history and our heritage. If we are unaware of our history, then the future stands to condemn us, for we wouldn't know where we are going. It is essential that we be constantly updating our history while celebrating memorable anniversary milestones. In this regard, the SBG Mission's history was updated, inclusive of the Dental Clinic, Mountain View Adventist Academy, and the Betway SDS Secondary School to meet the requirements of the revised Adventist Encyclopedia. Leiu Church celebrated their 50th anniversary of their dedication in 2017 under the theme, Hitherto Had the Lord Brought Us, and continuing. Mountain View Adventist Academy celebrated their 60th anniversary in 2018 under the theme, Celebrating Our Past, Inspiring Our Future. Kingston celebrated their 65th anniversary under the theme, May All Who Come Behind Us Find Us Faithful. The Vincentian Adventist American Association celebrated their 30th anniversary in 2018 under the theme, Everything Points to Love. Evisham Church celebrated their 70th anniversary in 2018 under the theme, 70 years of blessings, preparing for Jesus' coming. The president of the Caribbean Union, Dr. Kern Tobias, was a keynote speaker for this celebration. Paradise Church celebrated their 80th anniversary in 2018 under the theme, Redeeming the Past, Transforming the Future, 80 Years of Transforming Grace. Appreciation services were held for all pastors and teachers in separate retreats during the quadrennium. Appreciation services were also convened for all church elders, while appreciation and commendation were expressed yearly to all officers, leaders, and members for contribution to the mission of God's church. Appreciation. I pause to give God thanks for each worker of the SBG mission irrespective of your status, and wherever you are stationed, whether it be in the office, in our five schools, in the districts, at the dental clinic, in publishing, auxiliary services, or helping in the classroom, you are the reason for our successes, achievements, and accomplishments to which I sincerely express my profound thanks and appreciation. I wish to express sincerest appreciation to all our faithful committed church members who by your love for Jesus stayed with him and supported his work during the quadrennium. To our lay ministers, volunteers and church officers Special thanks to you for your shared leadership, ownership, and support of our many programs, initiatives, and services. To my fellow administrators and directors, thank you for your shared vision and the ease at which we got the work done. Thanks to all office staff, but especially to Mrs. Sonia McDonnell, Administrative Secretary, for your service of love and commitment. To my understanding, praying sole partner in ministry, 
my wife Mona. I appreciate your love and devotion, which has made the challenge of leadership much more bearable and tolerable. Thanks to the administration and directors of the Caribbean Union for services rendered to the field, for your belief in our capacity to manage and for your prayerful support. Today's meeting is to celebrate the goodness of God, affirm your devotion, appreciate your service, and commend you and you to the saving grace of our blessed Lord. Brothers and sisters, we are living in end times. These are not normal times. The final events are going to be rapid ones. I leave you with this slogan. Let us wake up, sing up, preach up, pray up, and pay up. But never give up, let up, back up, or shut up until the cause of Christ in SBG and in the world is built up and we hear the final well done from the mouth of our blessed Lord. May the Lord bless his church richly.